Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237, and this is a review of a film that I'm surprised I haven't done yet. Um, I saw this, I followed it while it was being made, got it like the day it came out, loved it, was very blown away by it, and it just popped in my head today and I thought, I, I really want to see that again and do a, a review, because it's about or centers around one of my all-time most passionate subjects, serial killers. And it's one of the best films I've ever seen on a real-life serial killer, and that is 2017's My Friend Dahmer. This is a magnificent film, I think. Of course, it is based on the acclaimed graphic novel of the same name by Durf Bachter, who went to school with Dahmer and is a character in the book and the film. The The book is really good too. Um, you know, this is definitely for me because you know I love comic books and I love serial killers. But, and there's a number of films about Jeffrey Dahmer, which just to say something about Jeffrey Dahmer, I mean, he's one of the major, uh, I don't really know how you would say it, legends or kings of serial killers, if you will. I mean, most books or documentaries or whatever will have his face on it. Um, he's one of the biggest names. He's one of the most notorious. And, you know, he's different than... Manson, Bundy, Gacy, they're, they're all unique in their own way. And I mean, Dahmer, he killed 17 young men and boys and had weird experiments with them and ate them. He was a sexual deviant. And just because of his notoriety, there's a number of films on him. I mean, the first one was in 93 called The Secret Life, which starred Carl Crew as Dahmer. 2002, there was Dahmer, starring Jeremy Renner, which I do have. 2006, there was Raising Jeffrey Dahmer, which took a look at his childhood. Uh, I didn't think that movie was that good at all. And then there's a, a great documentary. I think it's, if it's not on Netflix, you, you could probably find it somewhere. Uh, the Jeffrey Dahmer Files. Of course, that's a, a documentary, not a film. <laughs> Including countless of... A and E biography time. There, there's endless amounts of stuff on Jeffrey Dahmer out there. All that said, this movie is a very different approach because, where, it's written the the comic book was written by a high school friend of his, named um, Durf Bacter. I, th I think his name was John Bachter. His nickname was Durf. And this, <clears throat> this movie does not focus on Jeffrey Dahmer's crimes at all. And I think this might disappoint a lot of people. Because I think a lot of people who are into serial killers, they get these movies because they want to see, they want to see their favorite serial killers do what they do. But I really appreciate the the look that this film takes because it focuses on Dahmer's senior year in high school. A lot of the stuff that he was struggling with, you know, his parents' horrible behavior towards each other and their kids, especially his mother, his struggling sexual identity, dealing with the being a closeted homosexual in the late 70s, <clears throat> being a social outcast. The friends that he did have used him for basically as kind of like a court jester, which someone even calls him in this. And just his desires to find roadkill and dissolve them in acid and being the outcast that he is. And I mean, if you want to see Jeffrey Dahmer kill people, there's other movies. I mean, 
I mean, you, you can see Dahmer with Jeremy Renner, which is good in its own right. But I think as far as historical accuracy and just how well the actor plays Dahmer, how well the film is made, I think this is the best Dahmer film there is. Because we can watch any movie, any documentary, pick up any serial killer book, you know, just for the sake of doing so. There's Dahmer right there. We can read about his crimes, or we can see it in a documentary. We can see it in another Hollywood film or independent film. But this movie really gives us who Jeffrey Dahmer was. <clears throat> and do you see him kill anybody? No. But you didn't really see Ted Bundy kill anybody in... Uh, extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile. And I still think that's the best Ted Bundy movie. I even said in my review for that, if I want to see Ted Bundy kill people, I'll watch this, or I'll watch Bundy, or... Actually, I think there's more movies about Bundy than there is Dahmer. And uh, I'm going to make a lot of the same points that I made about Extremely Wicked with this, is that the film is so well made, and the actor does such a eerily outstanding job at playing this uh, notorious figure. <clears throat> and the rest of the film is just so well made anyway that, you know, we don't have to see him kill people. We have other, we have other source material for that. And Ross Lynch, which when I first heard this was being made I was like oh cool a, a Dahmer high school film and then Ross Lynch I was like is like isn't he in a high school musical like why are they gonna get a because I thought they were going for like a for lack of a better term like a twilight heartthrob kind of approach but then I think the first image released was this and I was like holy fuck he looks just like Dahmer and Ross Lynch I have nothing but absolute praise for him in this. I mean, he looks just like him. Even his walk. Go watch any documentary or any, like, footage of him going into a courtroom. His lengthy interview with Stone Phillips. That, like, hunched shoulder forward, like, walk that Dahmer does. Ross Lynch does perfectly. He has to go to some dark, dark places for this film. Gamers are arguing again. And he just did a wonderful job. It was... The screenplay was written by, and the film was directed by uh, Mark Myers, who... Let's see what else he's done. How He Fell in Love, which is a romantic drama. Um, not a lot of... I guess he's done basically slow, uh, indie stuff. And of course, yeah, uh, Alex Wolf plays Durf, who wrote the graphic novel. And probably because of this... Wolf went on to do uh, uh, Hereditary. He's the son in Hereditary. Which I think this film gives him more to do. I do think Alex Wolf is a very good actor. He was good at Hereditary. He just didn't have a lot to do up until probably the end. And you know, you got Anne Heche as his awful mother. I never cared for Anne Heche as an actress. Unless she's playing like a bitch, which she does in this. Uh, I'm gonna get the actor's name that plays his father, Lionel. Uh, Dallas Roberts plays Lionel. Uh, Vincent Kartheiser plays this doctor. 
this young doctor who jogs past his house that he sort of voyeurs every once in a while. And it, it just shows his um, introversion, his obsession with being out in this shed that he collects roadkill, dissolves it in his father's acids and chemicals because Lionel was a chemist. Um, you know, he... He sort of gets a laugh by accident by some kids in his class by making like a no noise. So he just starts doing these spastic routines where he just kind of spazzes out. And his group of friends, or there's this group of friends, Durf, Tommy, and Neil, who sort of like to get reactions and um, disrupt things sort of take Dahmer into their group and they use him as sort of their sort of their clown. You know, Dahmer gets the idea to be in every club picture in the yearbook and they go to different events and places to do a Dahmer. He one of his famous bits was, you know, running through the halls ye yelling hurricane drill. And then, of course, you know, it shows his parents arguing, which ultimately leads to their divorce, which, if I remember correctly, the divorce wasn't final until after high school. I think they were in a trial separation. But, and for the most part, the movie is very historically accurate. Because, I, I mean, it, one, it's not Hollywood, so it doesn't get the Hollywood treatment where... It's changed up for a, a dramatic license. I mean, this, I'm sure some stuff is. But, <clears throat> um, just with the stress of that and dealing with his sexuality and it goes in detail with his, uh, uh teenage alcoholism and it just shows the descent into just this darkness that this young man went through and ultimately helped shape who he would become and <clears throat> you know I don't really have to go through the plot because that's really what it is I mean it's the senior year of Jeffrey Dahmer And you do get some scenes, you know, like, where it does come close, where he's going to harm animals, and, you know, where he does sort of watch people, and really, like, he becomes sort of obsessed with this younger doctor that jogs, and how he's kind of a, a puppet to his friends and at school, but... The movie does a very good job at giving the 70s aesthetic. I mean, the like the, the furniture and the carpeting of the house, the uh, deco of the house, the cars, the clothes. Uh, Durf even wears a couple uh, National Lampoon shirts. But the, the hair and glasses on Ross Lynch and Ross Lynch's performance makes this fucking movie. The best on-screen Dahmer that I've ever seen. <clears throat> to, and, you know, uh, someone from Variety says, uh, disturbingly compelling and original. Which, yeah, um, because this came out before Extremely Wicked, which doesn't show Bundy doing his crimes up until the very end. It's more about his trials and escapes. But Zac Efron is the best on-screen Ted Bundy that I've ever seen. And, because <clears throat> I know in like the mid to late 2000s, uh, uh, Uwe Lamel was doing a lot of really, really bad, bad serial killer films. Son of Sam, BTK, I think he did one on the Green River Killer. No, I'm not going to list all of them. I, but... 
and the, most serial killer movies are not good. They they don't really go for quality. Some of them are good, but I, I really do hope to see ones like this. I mean, I still think the best Hollywood real life serial killer film would still have to be a monster based on Eileen Warnos, which I also have. Henry Henry will probably be my favorite film on this shelf of real life serial killer stuff. Even though that's mostly it's mostly fictionalized. It's mostly like just stuff that we could perceive to be true about Henry Lee Lucas. That's all besides the point. <clears throat> And I love how this film ends. I mean, can't really say spoiler alert because it's about a real person, but how it ends with him, you know, on June 18th, the week or so after graduation, he wakes up drunk and or hungover, and he picks up a, a hitchhiker named Stephen Hicks. So we all know what's going to happen. It ends with him picking up his first victim. So, this isn't really your typical serial killer biopic. It's more of a cautionary tale, which hasn't really been done that much, if ever, especially not this well done. A cautionary tale of, you know, not just one of the most notorious serial killers ever, but, you know, so other people can be like, hey, these are some warning signs. You know, we don't ignore odd stuff you see because we could have another Dahmer and lose a lot more lives. I know it sounds like I'm rambling, but I've really only reviewed... Uh, one other serial killer film that was extremely wicked. I have reviewed Henry. Henry is more of a film, I guess, by saying that there are there is some real stuff in there. But Henry Lee Lucas was such a a bullshit artist that you know a lot of that film is fiction. But with extremely wicked, you can go along with the plot, compare it to stuff we've seen because. A lot of that stuff we have seen. They even put it at the end credits. This we haven't. We didn't really know a lot about Dahmer in his high school days other than, you know, what's in books and documentaries. This is through, well, it's not really through the eyes of Durf because Durf is another character. But, you know, someone who was there and... Like, this is kind of stumping me because I don't really know how to review it. I don't want this to be... If it sounds like I'm rambling and like I don't know what I'm talking about, it's because I don't, so I apologize. Um, but, I mean, I know my shit about Jeffrey Dahmer, obviously, but this is such a different kind of film where someone as notorious as Jeffrey Dahmer... it. This is before he was even a criminal, before he ever really committed any criminal act other than maybe torturing animals. I I love the graphic novel. Yo, know, it's very moody, it's very well done. And the the movie does stay very close to it. And I like the idea of making not just another borderline slasher film but with a real life serial killer and going with this cautionary tale which granted yeah it's based on a source material but all the performances are splendid <clears throat> but Ross Lynch he I mean I'm not sure how old he was I'm guessing early 20s but he had to go to some dark places for this I Give him nothing but the most highest acclaim I can give. He had to go to some, again, dark places. But this is one of my favorite serial killer films ever. And it's not even about the killer. It's about the 
the troubled youth that grew up to be one. And uh, if you're interested in seeing more serial killer stuff, um, I have a meeting to do a book review of this, just to not go over every killer and every article, but because this is kind of my Bible. <laughs> but I do have a video of everything on my serial killer shelf. Lovecraft is here just because. Check out that video and if there's anything you want to see more, like a review or more in depth of from that video, check that out. And I meant for this review to be a bit more concise, but I didn't really feel like I had to go plot point by plot point with something like this because, you know, there really is no plot. It literally is just Dahmer's senior year of high school and what led up to his first kill. And I like how they didn't show it, because it's not about that. But, yeah. Excellent, excellent film. Highly praise it. If you're into serial killers and true crime, you know, <clears throat> get past the fact that it, it's not about his murders or his crimes. And more of, I guess, a prequel. And also, definitely check out the graphic novel because it's very worth it. It's... The the artwork is fantastic. You know, it, it's cartoony, but it's great. And both of these are very well done. But anyway, thank you for watching.